We live in an age when a man landing on the moon rates a couple of paragraphs in the inside pages of the newspapers. Matt Irvin, with his models, shows us an age when the silicon chip will be a quaint museum piece and Apollo 14 the Model T of space. If you watch television at all, you've probably seen some of Matt Irvin's work on Doctor Who, Spaceships of the Mind, Tomorrow's World, The Sky at Night, Blake 7. Between the mountains and clearing frame on both sides. Mm -hmm. Matt Irvin is a visual effects designer at the BBC, but he's also a member of the British Interplanetary Society. And his knowledge of inner, outer, and even unknown space makes one feel that any moment now he may be covered by the Official Secrets Act, section 117, subsection 8, paragraph 4, line 2. Thanks. Moon bases. The craft being used in our moon base illustrate a fair variety of the types of model work. At the very simplest, the little moon base buggy has three reeling wheels and is pulled on a piece of nylon. Very little, hopefully, can go wrong with it. Slightly more complex, the Lunar Dozer has got built-in motors and drive. This, these came from a commercial tank kit. The lead supplying power extremely noisy but fairly effective. On the extreme end of the scale, the moon buggy here is radio controlled. You can see the interior of it is very much packed out with all the gear, the motor that drives it, batteries and the servo that works the wheels. And finally, there's the little flying craft hanging by steel wires on a carriage and steel bar overhead. And of all the models, this one in particular emphasises one aspect very important to model work, which is high-speed filming. All these craft have inherent movements built into them, which the full-size counterpart hasn't. And to try and get over this, we shoot at double, treble, and sometimes even greater speeds, so that when we finally project the picture at the normal speed, all these movements have been ironed out. Kits in general are an invaluable source of parts for the final dressing of the model. Things such as these pods from other SF kits, these wings and tank wheels can all be used to very good advantage when you're finally finishing the model. Sometimes there's the opportunity to use parts that aren't always what they seem. This craft, for example, is built from two hair dryers. And just to emphasise the point, Matt Irvin's commitment to the future is complete. He models at home as well as at work. And when they do build bungalows on the moon, Matt Irvin, I'm sure, will have his name down for one. America's latest form of space transportation, the Space Shuttle, which will take them well into the next century. It's been over half a decade since Americans have last been in orbit, and this was with the international space flight Apollo Soyuz, using the last of the Apollo craft and a Russian Soyuz craft. This particular model, made of wood, has been used for demonstration purposes and also for simulated films. It contains the European Space Agency's space lab as this particular load, but underneath there's a space telescope, very important to astronomers, and also a heavy lift launch vehicle utilising the shuttle components to lift a very heavy load into orbit. Space probes, craft that travel outside the influence of the Earth, have always held a particular fascination for me. One of the most successful was Viking, America's Mars lander. Viking 1 touched down on the surface seven years to the day that Apollo 11 landed on the moon. This particular model was originally sprayed white, but it wasn't until the pictures actually came back from the surface I discovered that the colour was in fact light blue, so the model had to be resprayed. Moving out into the depths of the solar system have been the Voyager probes. This model of Voyager 1 was actually made from engineering drawings, the first time I've had the chance to work from such plans. It enabled items such as the scan platform to be accurately reproduced with the movement of the real craft. This craft is one of my favourite models. Designed as a deep space shuttlecraft, probably ferrying between an Earth orbit space station and a space colony, it was originally made for one television programme, but never used. However, since that date, it's appeared in about three others. In 
may seem like an idea out of science fiction, but Project Daedalus is a genuine scientific study by the British Interplanetary Society. The whole idea would be to send an unmanned probe to the star system Barnard Star over seven light years away. The complete craft, looking very unrocket like, would probably be built in Jupiter orbit. The first stage is dominated by these very, very large fuel tanks, and the second stage, sitting inside, is the only part which would actually reach the star system. The payload module at the front contains telescopes, antenna, small probes, like this, which would enter the atmosphere of any planets that were present, and most important, Daedalus' answer to R2-D2, the Wardens. These little craft would float around outside the payload module, doing any odd jobs, unjamming an antenna, unsticking a probe. But there's one thing that sets Matt Urban's work apart from real space exploration, and astronauts everywhere will probably be very glad about it. His models can be expendable.